Hey there garden fans and welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. What is going on garden fans? Welcome back. I want to start by thanking Jonathan over at the How to Be Self-Sufficient channel for helping out with the intro today, taking part in that homestead meme giveaway. Um, go check out his channel. He's just finished a medicinal herbal course and has some videos on that, which is perfect because today I'm going to walk around the food forest, show you what herbs I'm growing right now, and then I'm going to step inside and show you all the herbs that we've got stored and tell you how we use those herbs on a medicinal maintenance program. This is all part of a collaboration put on by Heidi over at Rain County Homestead. Um, check out the links to everybody involved in that down in the description. And let's get to it. Before we begin, as always, do your own research. Know the indications and contraindications for any herb you plan to ingest. That simply means know what an herb is used for and then know when not to take an herb. An example of some contraindications could be diabetes or low blood sugar. You may have atrial fibrillation. So please know yourself and do your homework before taking any herb. Holy catnip. If you live anywhere in zone eight, from California to Texas to South Carolina, you can pretty much grow catnip as a perennial herb and enjoy it fresh as a tea throughout the year. Catnip is an extremely powerful herb with many uses. Not only is it a good companion for trees, repelling pests through its root exudate, its aroma, and by drawing in beneficial insects, it is a powerful medicinal for humans. We all know that it excites cats, when taken as a tea for humans, however, catnip actually has sedative qualities, very similar to lemon balm and or chamomile. The next powerful medicinal I want to talk about is just a few feet away, and that's oregano. Oregano has been known to be a powerful respiratory medicine since Grecian times. It has thyme oil in it, which is used to repress a cough, hold back a cough, fight bacterial infections in the lungs, and it's good for sore throat and any kind of respiratory problem you can think of. I love me some oregano, easy one to grow in zone eight. Next herb I'm gonna hit on is lemon balm. I love lemon balm, also known as Melissa officinalis. It is another one of those herbs in the mint family that has calming, soothing, uh, relaxing properties. It's gonna calm you down, it's gonna calm the nervous system. Pretty good for me, I'm sure you all know, I'm a pretty high strung individual. So I use lemon balm as a base in any tea that I make. That's just for me personally. I also love it because it is a perennial anywhere in zone eight. Other mints we got are apple mint, spearmint, and mountain mint. Some other powerful medicinal herbs that grow well in zone eight are rosemary and lavender. If you have a pretty sandy spot that gets a little bit of rain and quite a bit of shade, these are two great medicinals to grow in that kind of environment. Next herb I want to talk about is garlic chives. Any plant in the allium family is good for stomach parasites. Allium family are great companion plants to trees too. They're going to repel pests, borers, and draw in beneficial insects as always. I've also got some chervil growing here. It's a new one this year. I'm going to try to establish it as a perennial herbal ground cover. The last plant I want to talk about growing is chamomile. I love chamomile. I, it is an annual here in zone eight, not a perennial, but I grow lots of it throughout March into June to store the flower heads for teas. Speaking of teas, let's go inside real quick. I'll show you what we got going on here inside. I generally make teas using tea steepers, as you see here. We've got tons of dried herbs in the house, catmint, catnip that we really just use fresh, so I still got a lot of the dried stuff. We've got some anise hyssop, which is a chocolate flavored herb in the mint family. More lemon balm, dried lemon balm that I use as a base for teas. We've got things like oregano soaking in oil that we use for Italian dishes. Moringa powder still hanging around. Here's some dried uh, garlic chives that we're gonna turn into a powder. And I still have a little bit of chamomile left from last year. 
So I'm right on time getting those seedlings started. I've got a small amount of wormwood here. Wormwood is for intestinal parasites. I put a little bit of it in my chicken food twice a month. Got some hot pepper and all various types of honeys that I use to sweeten my teas. But that is a brief introduction to what we got growing on here on site, how we use some of those herbs medicinally. And if any of this kind of information interests you, please subscribe. We do a lot here at the Permaculture Homestead. We're heavy into herbology, beekeeping, really just having a self-sufficient kind of lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. As always, God bless.